evening, everyone. Welcome to our Wednesday night service. So we're going to go ahead and get started with the Red Book number 277. That was the order you gave me, Carl. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm going to make you stand and stretch. Only trust him, 277. Okay, uh, we're going to start with a word of prayer, and then we're going to start with some prayer requests. Sorry, I got to wave. We're going to start with some prayer requests at the uh, at, uh, at the beginning of the service. So, if anybody has any prayer requests, prayer requests, uh, we can, I know we have. We were praying that just last uh, Sunday for a uh, lady named Julie who was going to be having some uh, surgery for a cancer. And so we'll lift up Julie in prayer. Uh, we are praying for Amy? Amy. Amy. We're praying for Amy. I have not spoken. And uh, Joe has not spoken. Okay. Uh, <laughs> and does anybody else have anything? Apart? Yes, Miss. What's his name? Michael. Michael. Let's pray for Michael who lost his boy. Um, and that the Lord will use that maybe to lead him to the Lord and to bring him to faith. And, um, okay. Well, all right. Let's go to Lord in prayer and we'll then we'll sing two more hymns after prayer. <coughs> 
Heavenly Father, Lord, we certainly love you, God, and thank you so much, uh, Lord, for being uh, our God. And Lord, thank you for loving us the way you do. And of course, Father, we love you because you first loved us. And Lord, as we're able to gather here together tonight, uh, Lord, we're here to hear from you today. And uh, we're, we, Lord, are just, uh, I know in each one of our lives, Lord, we need you. Uh, Lord, we need you to work in our lives, in, in our homes, in our families. Uh, God, we need you to teach us from your word. Father, we're here tonight on a Wednesday night. And Lord, I know that uh, for some it was a struggle to get here. And Lord, I'm sure many are tired. And I pray, God, that you would just uh, speak to our hearts tonight, Father. Lord, we pray that everything that's done here this evening, Lord, would, would br bring praise and honor to you. Lord, that if anything good happens here tonight, that it would be all glorified to you, Lord. And Father, I pray uh, that uh, in all things, Lord, that that you would uh, indeed meet with us tonight, Lord. As we have several prayer requests, Lord, we're praying for Julie, who uh, we lifted up Sunday in prayer that... She was uh, going to be having a surgery for cancer, Lord. I pray, God, that you would uh, be with her, be with the surgeon and the doctors and all that goes on there, Lord, that your hand would be involved in that. Lord, we're lifting up Amy in prayer tonight, Father, as you know every detail of her life, Lord, and what's going on with some friends and relatives in, in that situation, Lord. Uh, Father, we're uh, lifting up Joe tonight as he has an unspoken and uh, Father, you know the detail on that, Father. And God, we're lifting up a man named Michael tonight who's lost his wife, Lord. He's having a hard time. And Lord, he's he's unsaved. And, and Father, I pray, God, that you would work in his heart. I pray, Lord, that you would bring somebody to cross his path that would share the gospel with him, Father. And that he would accept you as Savior, Lord. And Father, I pray that in all these uh, circumstances, Lord, that your hand would be involved and that you would just touch these people's lives, Lord. Lord, even in a group this size, I I dare say that there's a prayer request that did not get mentioned here tonight. Lord, be with each and every one of us here tonight, Lord, as I know we each have needs in, in our hearts, Lord, that only you can uh, supply. But Father, as we're able to continue with our service tonight, continue in song and, and preaching. Father, I pray, Lord, that uh, we would lift our voices to you. I pray, Lord, that you would uh, guide us in all that we do tonight. And uh, we uh, pray that you just meet with us. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay. You can be seated. All right, turn the right, right hymn to number 261. 261. Turn your eyes upon Jesus, so don't look at me. Look up. 261, all three verses. <clears throat>
the things of earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace his word shall not fail you he promised believe him and all will be well then go to a world that is dying his perfect salvation to tell turn your eyes upon jesus look full in his wonderful face and the things of earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace all right good singing one more oops did i go out of order here i did <clears throat> Number 323. More about Jesus. <laughs> More about Jesus would I know. More of his grace to others show. More of his saving fullness see, more of his love who died for me, more, more about Jesus, more, more about Jesus, more of his saving fullness see, more of his love who died for me. Jesus, let me learn more of his holy will discern. Spirit of God, my teacher, be showing the things of Christ to me. More, more about Jesus. More, more about Jesus. More of his saving for more of his love who died for me more about jesus in his word holding communion with my lord hearing his voice on every line making each faithful saying mine more more about jesus more, more about Jesus, more of his saving fullness see, more of his love who died for me. More about Jesus on his throne, riches and glory all his own, more of his kingdom sure increase, more of his coming prince of peace more more about jesus more more about jesus more of his saving fullness see more of his love who died for me I'm so glad to be here tonight. And uh, it was a tiny bit of a struggle getting here tonight, but that's okay. Seems like we'll probably probably be dealing for months with uh, logs and trees being cleaned up on the side of the road. We got hung up on just that coming in. <clears throat> um, huh? Could you give me a one? <clears throat> Couple of announcements I forgot to announce. Um, this Sunday, uh, this Sunday. Uh, we are having Lord's Supper uh, here this Sunday, and we're going to have uh, some little uh, pods 
that look like a little hourglass and on the one side of it there's a tab you open and it has the unleavened bread and on the opposite side of it you open it up and it has the juice and uh, so we'll be able to do that in a COVID friendly way if you will not that I use that term often but we can we can just set those out there on the front people can grab them as they come in let me just put it that way and uh, but <clears throat> It's not going to be too long, and that place is going to start going around these pews again, and I'm excited for that. But this Sunday, we'll use those little pods, and um, so I'm excited for that. Um, on And so that's kind of an exciting date uh, for that. Um, okay, and I don't think we have any other announcements. I just want to say one more time for everybody who helped on Saturday and before that, thank you so much. We had an awesome hunt, and um, the community was blessed. I think our hearts were blessed, and I know that much work went into that, much labor. Uh, I didn't recognize I mean everybody had a part and that's what it's all about is everybody having a part in in the work moving forward in God's work and if it's just a small part and I know and I didn't I, I wanted to say something Sunday and it slipped my mind George I know George spent like seven hours pressure washing those sidewalks back there and uh, and and uh, brother Bob back there those two I mean there was there was labor and 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 brother Joe uh, mowed I and mean, he even mowed the neighbor's yard for this and you know and, and there was labor put into this that i really have not recognized and um i want to be sure i do uh everyone has a part in in god's work and that's the exciting thing about it and whether it's a great part or a small part it's it's all for the glory of god it's all for the kingdom of god and there was there was lives touched that day and um and it was a great day and of course, Easter Sunday, I thought we had a great day. We had three join the church. What a, what a wonderful day. And God's doing a work. And so I'm excited for that. And I just want to, I just want to lift that up one more time. Just, just praise the Lord for that. And, um, and I think it's a great praise item. I'm excited. Uh, I've, I'm already starting to look forward to the next big day. My wife's rolling her eyes. No, she's not. <laughs> but I'm already, I'm already looking forward to the next big day. We've already talked about some things. And um, there's some exciting things coming uh, for Springwater Baptist Church. And uh, we're going to have a great time this, this uh, coming months. Uh, if you will, turn your Bibles to the book of James, chapter 2. Book of James, chapter 2. I'm going to say we're not going to be long tonight. I've said that before, but... But I mean it. Now, can everybody hear me okay? Is this on okay? All right. Let's uh, let's stand as we read God's Word together. Book of James, chapter 2. We're going to start. We're going to back up just a few verses. We're going to start in verse 8. And uh, we're going to read down, I think, just to verse um, 13 tonight. And uh, just cover this small piece of Scripture here. But verse 8 tells us, and we read this last week, If ye fulfill... The royal law, according to the scriptures, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself, ye do well. But if ye have respect to persons, ye commit sin, and are convinced of the law as transgressors. For whosoever shall keep the whole law, and yet offend in one point, is guilty of all. For he that said, do not uh, commit adultery, said also, do not kill. Now, if thou commit no adultery, yet if thou kill, thou art a transgressor of the law. So speak ye, and so do, as they that shall be judged by the law of liberty. 
For he shall have judgment without mercy, that hath showed no mercy, and mercy rejoiceth against judgment. Let's pray, and then we'll be seated. Heavenly Father, Lord, we certainly love you tonight. Lord, I pray, God, that all that's said and done here tonight would be according to your will. Father, I pray that your Holy Spirit would meet with us. I pray, Lord, that, that your Holy Spirit would help me. Lord, I pray that um, that you would speak to each one of our hearts. Lord, I pray, God, for these next few minutes that you would just give me your power to be able to teach this message, to speak clearly, uh, Lord, to uh, present this the way you would have it presented. And, Father, it's your word and it's your power that's going to help us tonight. And we ask for that tonight. Please meet with us now in Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat> uh, you may be seated. So for the last several Wednesdays, we've been, of course, going through the book of James. And we know that uh, James is the half-brother of Jesus and the, the son of Joseph and Mary. And, and he's writing, uh, of course, to uh, Christians from the Jerusalem church, uh, which he is pastor of, that have been scattered abroad into the communities from the persecution in the book of Acts that we'll see. I, I believe it was eight, chapter 8, verse 1, that you read about that. And he's writing to these uh, individuals and families who have been who have scattered from Jerusalem because of the persecution and they're scattered amongst the people uh, really starting new lives and uh, in, 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 in the uh, Gentile communities and he's writing with them giving them uh, an awful lot of instruction on how to live as a Christian and and uh, you know what to do what not to do and, and things of that sort and I think on even today, as we have so many people moving in this nation right now, and I'm a big fan of you don't never you don't move until God moves you, and uh, just like the children uh, of Israel in the desert, they never moved until the cloud moved. When the cloud moved, they moved. When the pillar of fire moved, they moved, and uh, when it stayed, and they stayed, and. And uh, my life right now is, is uh, God has uh, not moved me, and I'm staying. He moved us here, and the clouds here, as far as I'm concerned. And 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 God moved us here, and, and this is where we're going to be until a cloud, the cloud moves again. And I think in every Christian's life, we need to be very aware of of what God's doing, and and going to God with every decision we make, especially uh, moving or or around in 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 different places. But that aside, I'm getting on a little rabbit trail there. These Christians had been pushed into the communities and around about, and really for the purpose of uh, the spread of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And uh, James has given them an awful lot of instruction. As of, we learned last week, we were talking about uh, not uh, holding one person above the next, above the next uh, that we would... Uh, uh, that anyone who walks through these doors that we we want to treat uh, with Christ's love, and whether they're um, somebody that's uh, doing very well or somebody who's uh, struggling and and uh, just coming in off the street, if you will, and how we want to uh, show Christ's love to everyone who walks through these doors, and we ought to do that in our lives just in every day. And sometimes it seems that uh, we. We can show more kindness to a lady at a cash register sometimes than than somebody uh, even in our own home. It seems like sometimes our own, you know, when we have people that are close to us, uh, we we have to be more diligent about showing Christ's love to them. I, I I have to be very diligent about showing Christ's love and my love towards my family uh, because you always want somebody that doesn't know you to think you're kind and. You know, you want to lift their day up, but let's lift each other's day up also. As it seems like there's, I guess where I'm going with this, and again down a rabbit trail, but I'll finish it. You know, as we talked last week, for if there come one, they enter into your assembly, uh, and not to be partial. The word that slipped my mind, not to be partial one to another. But I want to be sure that 
that if we are partial, it's to our people. When somebody comes in, we want to show them Christ's love. We don't want to, we don't want to down them or, you know, we want to lift them up. As I mentioned last week, most people who come and visit a church are here for a reason. You know, they're here because, you know, not just everyone just drives by and goes, "Hey, I think I'll visit it. I'll visit that church." You know, and we want to be sure that we're encouraging. And we want to be sure that that encouragement is not only here in this house, but is here in this house, in, in your house, you know, in all of our homes. That that encouraging love, because sometimes I think that that when I go home, I know in, in my past, I thought, well, my home's where I can let out all my steam. Well, I've learned over the years, it's better for me to let out all my steam before I get to my house. Let me just get rid of that, and then go home and, and and be an encouragement to my family, and come to the church and be an encouragement to to our to our family here. And if there's steam that needs let out, you know, we let that out somewhere else. I've heard it said, I'd rather let my I'd rather let my steam out on somebody I don't know, and then go home and to people I love. <laughs> but we don't want to do either. But you know, I'm just saying is, we want to lift up people. We want to be kind to people. We don't want to be partial. And uh, we want Christ's love to, to be in, in especially our home, especially our church, and everywhere we go. Let's lift people up. So as we continue on, it says, talk, we, just a recap on fulfilling the royal law according to the scriptures. Of course, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. And we, we uh, refer to that uh, <clears throat> scripture shown to us in in uh, Leviticus and that was in actually Leviticus chapter 19 and verse 18 I got my notes on the wrong page here alright <clears throat> Leviticus 19 and 18 and thou shalt not avenge nor bear any grudge against the children of thy people but thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself I am the Lord and Jesus takes it a step farther in John uh, chapter 13 and 34 he says a new commandment I give unto you that ye love one another as I have loved you that ye also love one another and we just want to be sure that we're uh, showing Christ's love one to another in our homes in our church in our community I think we achieved that on Saturday I really do I think that when we had the community here I think they left feeling loved um And then as we continue on, verse 9, just as a quick recap. Um, But if you have respect unto persons, you commit sin and are convinced of the law as a transgressor. And uh, so here we go this week, starting in verse 10. Whosoever keep the whole law and yet offend in one point is guilty of all. For he said, do not, for he who said, do not commit adultery said also do not kill and if thou commit no adultery yet if thou kill thou art become transgressor of the law as I wrote down here we want to be reminded of of two things first of all it's important that every Christian keeps a short list with the Lord it's very important every Christian keep a clean slate with our sin with the Lord with God Because we all have it. The Bible tells us if you have respect for persons, you commit sin. That seems so simple. Because I know there's some people I like more than others. I think we can all say that. But it says if we if we have respect for persons, we commit sin. If we disobey one point of the law, we're guilty of the law. And even as, and we understand that we're saved by grace. And we understand that, that we're saved by trusting Christ as our personal Savior. But we're always dealing with sin. Every day, every one of us. No matter what season of life we're in, whether you're a young college a student or somebody who's in retirement. And we have all in between right here. All of us until the day we go home to glory see Jesus face to face 
are going to live in this imperfect mortal body covered with flesh that is sinful. And we want to remember that it's important to keep that clean slate with God. 1 John 1 9, if we confess our sins, He's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Why do we want to keep the clean, a clean slate with God? Because every one of us wants to live in the center of God's will. I don't think there's anyone here tonight that would say, I don't want to be in the center of God's will. I think every one of us here tonight are here tonight because we want to be where God wants us to be. And, and that's in the center of, God, of His will. And when we're in a place where, you know, we have, if you will, unconfessed or unrepented or just stuff that we haven't taken to the Lord, and we can all get there. Every one of us can be in that place. And the, um, the funny thing is, is every one of us can be in that place and sometimes not realize it. Sometimes not realize it. Because life's busy. Life's busy, and, and sometimes the... <clears throat> Sin, if you will, the the what I'm talking about here is just things of the heart. Again, uh, partiality towards people, which is what the the context of the scripture is right before this, uh, being partial towards others. Um, <clears throat> I want to tell you right now, <clears throat> what's going on in our nation? A portion of it. I'm not saying all of it. A portion of it is taking Christians and letting them receive a bitter heart against what's going on. I'm telling you right now, we want to be very cautious of that. We want to be very cautious of getting so upset about just things that are going on you know, in the nation and the government with COVID, with all that's going on. Because we need to protect our heart. And, we, and, and just like the song said, we need to keep our eyes on Jesus. Because when we do that, the things of this world seem a lot smaller. But if we keep our eyes on what's going on in this world, I'm telling you right now, it's going to it's going to put a Christian, any Christian, in a place where they're not quite in the center of God's will. Because God's saying, hey, I got this. Why are you so upset when you're my child, and I have a will for your life, and it's not really cons- being that concerned about the, the things that are going on in this nation, in this world, as to what's going on underneath where God wants us to be. And if I was all caught up into what's going on here today, in our nation, in our city, in, in all this going on, I, I, I would dare say that I'll spend more time learning about that than I will learning about God. Because it'll catch me up. I think we all have learned here, we only have so many hours in a day. You know, there's only, I mean, I, I know as as just an illustration or an example, getting ready for the for the hunt, right? Two weeks prior, you know, we're, we're throwing, we're, we're out running flyers and we're flying everything we can. And, and uh, you know, of course, we're doing services, you know, at the same time. And of course, I'm working a full time job at the same time. And. You know, we're all busy. Life is, is so busy, and we're trying to serve God. And, you know, and I found out I only have so many hours. You know, and I know that. I mean, it's, it's not something new to me. But in the church ministry it is, in this particular environment, and trying to do it, was kind of new to me. I'm like, whoa. You know, and then, you know, and I'll just say, putting a lot of effort into Saturday, and all of a sudden, Easter Sunday's coming. I'm running out of time, you know, and I'm just using that as an example. Is we only have so much time in our lives. We only have so much time in our days. And the Bible says to redeem the time. To, to take it and use it, and we're to be stewards of what God's given us. The most, value th- the most valuable thing God's ever given us is, is never our, our homes or our, or our finances. It's our time. Because it's time that it takes to do ministry. You know, to change somebody's life, it takes time willing to be invested. To to see this church grow, it's going to take time. But but we have to use it wisely. And, and if we spend our time getting caught up in the things of, of what's going on around us, 
we're going to lose time spending in God's word and God's prayer and, and, and being in the center of God's will. And so we want to be very cautious. And, and James gives a lot of caution in this, in this book uh, of saying, hey, listen, we want to be sure that that we are uh, that we're in the center of God's will. Um, in verse, we're in verse ten here. Actually, verse eleven. Or yeah, we're down to verse eleven. We want to understand. We want to understand that even as as Christians, that we are always going to deal with transgressing the law. Uh, sinful in in our lives, and to and to and what that could be, and it doesn't necessarily have to be the top five or the top ten that some might come to mind, and those are usually items that we'll point out in somebody else's life. Look what they're doing. I'm glad I'm not doing that, you know, because our nature, you know, our our problems as as a Christian and seasoned Christians, especially, I'm going to say, I mean, it's it's a hard thing. It's it's actually it's more mental and a heart thing and being sure that we're we're right where God wants us to be and that we are putting more time invested into his word and prayer than we are putting time into knowing what's going on uh, around us. So we want to be sure that we're confessing our sins and of course John 1 and 10 if we say that we have not no sin uh, we make him a liar and the word is not in us. And so we need to understand that every one of us no matter who we are here today, have we need to be sure that we're just uh, taking whatever whatever's daily to God and uh, and giving it to Him. Secondly, we want to understand that even the really really nice good lost person needs Jesus Christ. That we deal with sin, and they're condemned with sin. We need to be sharing the gospel. We need to be sharing the gospel. Uh, every opportunity that we are able to have to give an invite, uh, invite somebody to church, maybe you know, and, and even just pull out, share the gospel, and say, hey, "Listen, Jesus can save you." We have friends, we have family, we have neighbors, we have a community who is lost in their sin and they're dying in their sin, and we need to be sure that we are. Uh, proclaiming that and so uh, we need to be sure that we we have a short list uh, clean slate if you will with God and and that uh, we understand that uh, those who are not saved who are not Christians that they do have a real problem and we have the answer and uh, we need to be sure that we're aware of that and just continue to keep that in the front of our mind um, because as it says, you know, he says, um, For whosoever keep the law and the whole law and offend of one point is guilty of all. And that goes right back to, you know, the wages of sin is death. It only takes one. It only takes one. The wage of one sin is death, but the gift of God's eternal life uh, through Jesus Christ our Lord. So we want to keep it clean uh, slate uh, with the Lord. Uh, okay, let your actions demonstrate your words. Uh, verse 12. It says here, So speak ye, and so do, as they that shall be judged by the law of liberty. We'll spend a little bit of time in this verse. Let your actions demonstrate your words. And uh, it says, So you speak, and so do. And as we're as we're proclaiming Christianity, hey, let's be sure we're living it. Let's be real with God. I wrote that down. Hey, we should all be sure we're being real with God. Uh, let's strive for the faith of the gospel. I truly believe that a lot of our um, uh, people are praying for revival because Christians need revival. You don't pray for revival for the lost because revival starts with Christians. And in revival, you know, it's going to start in the church. And when the churches have revival, it's going to go out to the community. I pray that this church right here will have revival. 
and, it, and I believe God's doing things here. I believe every week we see we see new things God's doing. We see new faces. We're seeing people saved. But it says, as we speak, we need to do, as, as we proclaim Christianity, we need to live it, if you will. We need to be real with God. We need to strive for the faith of the gospel. Philippians 1 and 27 says, uh, Only let your conversation be as it becometh the gospel of Christ. You know, I really like that verse because I believe every one of us in our conversations with people, somewhere in that conversation the gospel should come out. Whether it's something of the gospel. Hey, do you have a great weekend? Oh, we had a wonderful weekend. Church was great. I work on a construction site and I talk about church almost every day. You know, with tough guys. You know, the guys with Everybody has tattoos. Tattoos are almost popular anymore. You, only, you used to use that as tough guys, but everybody has tattoos anymore. But, you know, but you know, I mean, construction guys. You know, and, and they'll ask me. They'll say, hey, how was your weekend, Mark? Oh, it was great. Man, we had an Easter egg hunt on Saturday. They're like, really? Well, what was that for? Oh, it was at our church. And we had 86 people come. Man, it was a great day. We had kids come, and I got to share the gospel. Oh, wow. Oh, what church you go to? You know, people are curious. And our conversation ought to always have something about the gospel in it. It's easy to put in because most people will, they may not come, but they're curious. And they'll listen. And and I've struck up, I've got to, I've got to actually go as far as sharing the gospel with somebody from somebody asking me, how was my weekend? Oh, it was great. We were on the bus route last this weekend. Oh, we had a lot of kids. Boy, those kids have a rough life. Oh, really? What's a bus route? Well, let me tell you. And we pick up these kids from you know broken homes. And man, and you, and you can just you just people are interested. People are interested. They're interested in church. The problem is nobody talks about church that much. But if you do, people listen because they're curious. Because most people, you know, a lot of people don't go to church. Many people anymore in this generation, the younger generation, meaning in their 20s and early 30s, they may have never been to church. It's a generation that maybe they weren't raised in church. And so they're curious about it. People get curious about it. And uh, in Philippians, it's saying here, let your conversation uh, be as it becomes the gospel of Christ, that whenever I come and see you, or else be absent, I may hear of your good affairs, that you stand fast in one spirit, in one mind, striving together for the faith of the gospel. And, and my prayer is, is that this church, Springwater Baptist Church, that we will be striving together. Of course, there's other churches in the community. They're striving for the gospel also. But that this church, that together, that we will strive together for the furtherance of the gospel, and that the members of this church, of Springwater Baptist Church, that in their conversations with friends and family, that the, that the church comes up, and the gospel comes up, and hey, Jesus loves you comes up, and, and that because people, they're ready to listen. But oftentimes, we're just, we, and, and even myself, there's oftentimes, I'm just not speaking it like I should. I'm just not speaking it out in the times that I have and the opportunities I have because we only have so much time to do that. And so we want to be sure that we're being real with God. We're striving for the faith of the gospel. James 2 and 12, as we continue, oh, he says, so speak and so do. Uh, and then we go on to say, as they that shall be judged by the law of liberty. The law of liberty. Commentary Albert Barnes, he once wrote, The perfect law of liberty, referring to the law of God or His will, however made known as the correct standard of conduct. It is called the perfect law as being wholly free from all defects. Wouldn't it be nice to live in a nation that had perfect laws? <laughs> 
you see some of the laws that are passed in this nation it's it just it blows your mind it's like how could they pass something like that how could people vote in something like that you know it, but you know we do live we have a perfect law of liberty we have a perfect nation that we're that we are uh, citizens of and he goes on to say, it is the perfect law. It is called the law of liberty or freedom because it is a law producing freedom from the servitude of sin, of sinful passions and lusts. The book of Psalms, verse uh, chapter 19 and verse 7, uh, the Bible tells us, uh, the law of the Lord is perfect. It's perfect. Um, converting the soul the testimony of the Lord is sure making wise the simple and James is saying here we ought to live the Christian life with a real emphasis on being in God's will the the, the uh, law of liberty for us is being in God's will Jeremiah 31 and 33 I'm going to turn there real quick. I just jotted this down when I was driving. 31 and 33. And of course, he tells us 31 and 33. And right here. And this shall be the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. After those days, saith the Lord, I will put my law in their inward parts and write it in their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. And they shall teach no more every man his neighbor and every man his brother, saying, Know thee, the Lord, for they shall all know me from the least of them unto the greatest of them, saith the Lord. And I will forgive their iniquity, and I will remember their sin no more. Listen, when we trust the Lord, uh, the Lord Jesus Christ as our personal Savior, the law of God is written in our hearts. And when we're reading God's Word, and we're praying to God, and we're in the center of God's will, and I like how uh, uh, Albert Barnes did write this, referring to the law of God or His will, uh, however made known, and of course that's made known through the Scriptures, uh, the Lord as we read his word individually and not just in the preaching service but at home in our own times and we're studying God's word he will reveal his perfect will for us he will teach us through his will through his word with the Holy Spirit of God and uh, and to be in that center of God's will applying God's truths to our lives we want to be sure that as we're reading uh, that we are applying God's truths uh, to our lives, knowing that regardless, one day we will stand before Jesus Christ and give an account for our lives. As he goes on to say, that uh, to, to speak ye and, do, and so do, as they that shall be judged by the law of liberty. And of course, there's one day that as Christians that we will stand before Jesus Christ and be judged. And uh, we're not going to be judged for our sin because our sin is under the blood, but we will be judged for how we've lived our lives since we've been saved. And, 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 and we will be rewarded. And the Bible tells us of rewards. And we will be rewarded for, for what we have done, and we will not be re re rewarded uh, for what was... Um, we'll be rewarded for what we did for Christ... And we will not be rewarded for what we did just for ourselves. And, and, we'll be, and we'll be held accountable for how we spent our time. And how we spent our time in these days. And we want to be sure that we're redeeming that time. And that we're uh, living that time uh, for the Lord Jesus Christ. And uh, so as we continue on here, uh, there is that uh, the judgment seat of Christ. Uh, Hebrews 9 and 27 tells us, And it is appointed uh, unto Ben once to die, but after that the judgment. Revelations uh, 11 and 18. 
uh, and the nations and the nations were angry and the wrath has come and the time of the dead that they should be judged and that thou should give should give reward unto thy servants the prophets and to the saints and to them that fear thy name small and great and should destroy them which destroy the earth knowing that uh, we live under a perfect law of liberty freedom but not to use this liberty to live as carnal Christians we don't want we, we want to be sure that we're not using this liberty to live as carnal Christians Christians have a liberty uh, that a lost person does not have you know a Christian has liberty they have freedom that word liberty is freedom when we accepted Christ as Savior Christ made us free you shall know the truth the truth shall make you free we have a freedom that the world does not have can I say this we have a freedom to go before the throne of God in prayer now we know that God in uh, hears the prayers of the lost we see that in the story of Cornelius where he he prayed to God and he gave alms and the angel said your prayers and your alms have come to remembrance before God but those prayers and remembrance are coming before God as a memorial those people are not entering the throne room the lost and, and, and I, I would dare say that before I was saved I know God heard my prayers but as a saved but as an unsaved person those prayers came to him as a memorial but as Christians we we have we have all rights to enter into the throne room we have that privilege we can go right to the throne of God in a different type in a different way of praying we have that freedom we have a freedom that others that the lost does not have the Christian has a freedom to enter into uh, prayer to enter into that relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ and God himself in a way that the lost person does not and we can we can go right boldly into the throne room of God and we can we can beg and we can plead and we can pray and we can intercede and we can ask and, and, and we have that freedom that liberty we have the liberty to have an understanding of God's word that a lost person does not have that is a freedom that we have that is a liberty that Christ has given us uh, he says we have the the law of liberty we have these freedoms that that if we do not exercise them just like in our nation you've heard that I, I've just you know I've heard this a little bit you're, you're only as free as you exercise your freedoms and we have a liberty, we have a freedom here in Christ that we 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 need to we we need to exercise that freedom. We need to be sure that we're going to the throne of of grace. We need to be sure that we're in uh, God's word that that He gives us an understanding of that that the world cannot have. We need to understand. We need to to uh, know that we have the liberty, the freedom to share the gospel. You know, we have a Holy Spirit that dwells in us the, that gives us a power that only a Christian has to share the Word of God with someone else with power. See, a lost person, they can read God's Word and it will affect their lives and, and they can get saved that way, uh, praise the Lord. But a Christian can take God's Word and present it to somebody with power. That's a liberty, that's a freedom that only Christians have. And we want to be sure that we are that we are taking that and that <clears throat> and that uh, so speak so ye speak and so do as they that shall be judged by the law of liberty. First Peter two and sixteen as free and not using your liberty for a cloak of maliciousness, but as the servants of God. We want to be sure that we are using our liberty for Christ's sake. 
and not for personal gain. And lastly, and we'll be done, let's be a merciful people. A merciful people. Verse 13. For he shall have judgment without mercy that hath showed no mercy. And mercy rejoiceth against judgment. Let's be a merciful people. There is a biblical principle about mercy and forgiveness. Giving others what they do not deserve. You know, that's what mercy is. It's receiving what you do not deserve. Actually, that's what grace is. Mercy is not receiving what you do deserve. Sorry, I got that mixed up. Grace is receiving what you do not deserve. Mercy is not deserving what you do deserve. I like both of them. But isn't it so often that we want to give it back? They, they deserve that. And can I say more so probably in our thoughts than in our actions? More so in our heart than in our actions? You know, they deserve... You fill in the blank. You fill in the purpose. The person. You fill in the, the, the they. You know, I wish they'd just get theirs. Mercy starts right here. It really does. And then that's where I was getting at earlier, maybe earlier in the service. And, and this, this really is, a, not a fear of mine, but I believe this. And I just say I believe this. The attack on Christians right now is, is, is definitely an attack on the heart. It's an attack on the heart. If the Christian communities can have a hard heart towards this world, towards the politicians, towards all the wickedness that's going on, I'm not saying I'm not saying to uphold it or to agree with it. I'm saying protect your heart. Because out of the heart of man it's out of the mouth is what defiles the man and then it comes from the heart sin starts in the heart and, and sin can, can dwell in our mind and to be unmerciful can, will start here before it ever comes out and we want to have a merciful spirit about us a merciful spirit hey people don't deserve mercy that's why you give it nobody we, we don't deserve we don't deserve God's mercy but he gave it he gives it every day I, I don't even know every time God showed his mercy on my life if I was to count all the times that I knew and I could I could go back and go God is merciful with me there God is merciful with me there God is merciful with me there those are carnal things that I know of God knows my heart God knows what he has actually showed mercy on me and saying Mark you don't even know the mercy I've had on you you know and, and, and God showed mercy on me that I don't even know about can't we show mercy on others and grace for if you forgive men their trespasses your heavenly father will also forgive you but if you forgive men not their trespasses neither will your heavenly father forgive your trespasses judge not and ye shall not be judged condemn not and ye shall not be condemned forgive and ye shall be forgiven Given it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down and shaken together, running over. Shall men give unto your bosom? For at the same measure that ye meet withal, it shall be measured unto you again. 
I'm saying that we live in a time right now, right now, that the Christian is completely against everything that's going on. Yet, we're called to be merciful. Because the wickedness that's going on is who Christ died for. It's who Christ died for. These people don't need to be having their fingers pointed at saying, you're going to get yours. They need to be having God's word shared with them. Saying, hey, I could help you. I can help you. And they they may not listen. But you know, it doesn't matter if they listen. It matters that our heart is right. See, I'm not here to preach against the world. Although there's a lot I could preach against. Because God knows that God knows what's going on in the world. Our job is to reach one person at a time with the gospel. See, our job is to protect our hearts, to keep our heart pliable, soft, so that we can hear the Spirit talking. So we can have a kind spirit towards somebody who's unkind. So we can have a merciful disposition towards somebody who does not deserve it. So we can show grace to people who don't deserve it because we didn't deserve the grace God gave us. And can I say, we still don't. We still don't. But he gives it every day. Every day. And we ought as Christians to try to learn to be merciful and to show grace to a people who do not deserve it. And it's a hard thing. We live in a very liberal city. I mean, we're on the outskirts, you know. But it's a city that needs the gospel. It's a city that needs mercy. It's a city that needs grace. And it will not come from the world. It will only come from Christians. It will only come from Christians. Because we have a freedom to give it. See, God's given us a, a... He's liberated us. He's given us a freedom to be able to give His grace to someone else. And we ought not forget that. I think James is saying here, listen, as you're scattered about, and I really mean it, I feel like Christians are scattered right now. And I think it's kind of an opposite effect. The world's coming in around the Christians. And, we'll be, and, and we appear to be scattered a little bit right now. He's saying... In verse, what, 13? For he shall have judgment without mercy that hath shown no mercy. And mercy rejoiceth against judgment. There's a biblical principle here. Hey, show mercy and you and will receive mercy. You know? God's always merciful. But how much more when we're willing to be to show God's mercy to others? We want to be that conduit. We want to be that that extension of God's grace. That extension of God's grace. That's why He saved us. That, that, that's why He saved us. And so that we can show God's grace to others. We can show God's mercy to others. And more, more times out of more than not Listen, mercy goes to people that that we would think in my own heart 
You don't deserve this, but I'm going to give it to you anyways. It's really easy to show mercy to somebody you really like. Let me be merciful to you. You're mine. But see, mercy goes to people that we don't like. That we don't care for, can I say. That we don't agree with. I want to show you mercy. So I want to take with us tonight and I, and I mean this with all my heart I hope that each one of us will you know the, you know, the Bible says to examine our examine ourselves and, and I have to do this all the time and, and you all have your relationship with the Lord and read and pray and you know in your time and I'm not telling anybody how you know but it's always a good thing to examine yourself examine myself say Lord is there anything I need to work out in my life Lord let me have a soft heart even in a hard time and even in a time like we have in, in our nation right now let my, let my, let my heart stay soft to hard people. Don't, don't let me get caught up. Don't let me have a hard heart. Don't, don't let me become bitter over things that are happening in this world. Help me to keep my eye on you, Jesus. That's all for today. Let's pray. Father, I love you. God, thank you for this time that we have. Look to your word. And Father, I pray, God, that as we continue our week and finish out the week, as we come across people and Lord, just events in this nation continue to unfold. Lord, I know that you know every everything that's happening. That nothing is happening that you haven't known for eternity. But Father, to us it's new, and to us it's a hard thing, and to us it's a scary thing, Lord, with all that's going on in our world. I, Father, I pray that as we leave this place tonight, that we would hope in our hearts that, that we would remain soft and full of your love, ready to give to others grace and mercy. And that all we do, Lord, would be pleasing to you, Lord, that that our lives would be a shining example of Christianity and, and would be a light to a dark world. And Father, we thank you tonight. I pray, God, that as we dismiss here, that you would give each one of us uh, safety as we go home to our places and bring us back on Sunday, Lord. We pray tonight in Jesus' name. Well, praise the Lord. George, go, my leg's asleep. <laughs>